Poland is an important regional power on the border with Ukraine, especially the military upgrade of the U.S. Army to Poland and the most powerful U.S. war machines in the Polish Army made Poland the eastern fortress of the alliance. Poland was also among the countries most affected by the Russia-Ukraine war, as it is a neighbor to Ukraine. That's why the Warsaw government is trying to protect its borders. There is a historical sense of insecurity in relations between Poland and Russia. The Ukraine war has further cemented insecurity. As a matter of fact, the developments may drag Poland into a wide conflict that may have devastating consequences. In fact, according to some experts, Russia's next target may be Poland. Poland and the United States have had a bumpy relationship over the years, but the war in Ukraine brought them closer and made Poland an indispensable ally. Poland began to take some measures to not be the next target and to challenge Vladimir Putin. Cooperation between the two countries has been increasing in recent years. The United States is strengthening its military presence near the Russian borders. Polish officials had been demanding the U.S. to establish a permanent military base in their country for many years in the face of a possible Russian threat. In March, the first permanent U.S. military garrison on Polish soil was opened. Thus, the number of permanent U.S. military bases in Europe increased to eight. Camp Kosciuszko, the first permanent U.S. military garrison on Polish soil, started its operations with a ceremony in the city of Poznan. Military officials from both countries and Polish Minister of National Defense, Mariusz Blaszczyk, attended the opening ceremony of the first permanent military unit at the garrison level. Blaszczyk said that at a time when Russia is trying to rebuild its empire and attack Ukraine, they value the constant presence of the U.S. armies in the country. It will also transfer 19 air tankers of the United States National Guard and the U.S. Air Force Reserve to Powitz, Poland in the coming months. The move aims to strengthen the U.S. Air Force's presence in Eastern Europe and ensure the security of allies within NATO. The main task of deployed tankers, which includes KC-135 Stratotanker KC-10 Extender and the latest KC-46 Pegasus is to refuel warplanes, including the 35 a Lightning II. This will increase the range of NATO missions in the region. According to the U.S. Air Force Command, a transfer is being made from Spang Dolomere Base in Germany to Polish territory as part of Operation Copper Arrow. These activities testify to the seriousness of NATO's intention to ensure the security of its members and maintain stability in the region. This critical move by the U.S. is a necessary step in light of threats from Russia and other potential enemies. From the beginning of March, the tankers began to carry out their duties from the base in Powitz. Tankers refueled KC-46, Pegasus, Finnish Air Force Sefer 18 from 931st Air Base at McConnell on April 13. The measures taken by Poland are not limited to this extent. The Polish government says within two years the country's armed forces will double, making it one of the most powerful military groups in Europe. Polish Defense Minister Mariusz Blaszczyk announced plans to increase the country's army from 150,000 to 300,000 due to Russian aggression. The defense minister wants Poland to build an army big enough to act as a dam that won't be demolished by Russia. With this move, Poland aims to deploy its army up to the Russian border. In addition, Poland stated that by increasing the number of soldiers, it will have an army three times the size of the United Kingdom. The UK Army has around 100,000 soldiers in active service. Faced with a general election in the autumn, the Polish government also embarked on a massive defense spending spree of billions of pounds that resulted in massive orders for tanks, artillery and warplanes. Defense Minister Mariusz Blaszczyk said we want to serve for another term because then we can finish the process we started. Mariusz Blaszczyk said he needed two more years. Blaszczyk stated that within two years the Polish army will be the strongest in Europe. Blaszczyk added that Poland will soon receive dozens of US-made Abrams tanks. The government has ordered 116 old Dem 1A1 Abrams as a temporary measure to replace tanks shipped to Ukraine. 
the minister stated that the elderly Abrams will join the 18th mechanized division stationed in eastern Poland. In another development, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III and Polish Defense Minister Mariusz Blaszczyk held a meeting at the Pentagon. At the meeting, the two ministers discussed the situation in Ukraine and ways to strengthen interoperability between the U.S. and Poland. The two met in part to sign the Mutual Defense Supply Agreement, which will deepen the partnership between the country's defense industry bases. Lloyd Austin welcomed Blaszczyk, who also served as Deputy Prime Minister. Austin brought up Thaddeusz Kosciuszko, a Polish officer who fought with the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. Austin said since the founding of our republic, Americans and Poles have fought side by side, and the bond between the two countries continues to grow stronger to this day. Defense Minister Austin said that Poland's support for Ukraine is strong. The U.S. Defense Secretary noted that Poland is a leader in providing the Ukrainian army with weapons and training it needs to defend itself from Russian invasion. Austin said, In fact, we would never have been able to do so much for Ukraine after the indefensible invasion of Russia if it were not for Poland's enormous contribution. The Polish defense minister praised solidarity, unity and unprecedented support. Mariusz expressed his belief that this will continue until Ukraine's victory. Additionally, the Polish defense minister will travel to Illinois to celebrate the 30th anniversary of his country's partnership with the Illinois National Guard as part of the state partnership program. So how is the relationship between Ukraine and Poland? The position of Poland, Ukraine's most staunch supporter, both in Europe and in the world, has changed. The heart of Europe now beats in Warsaw, as it is known. Poland formed a tank coalition shortly after the war started with the participation of various countries. The coalition expanded and the support for Ukraine increased. Some of the 14 Leopard 2 tanks that Poland promised to Ukraine are about to reach the territory of Kiev. Poland became the first Western ally to transfer modern Leopard tanks to Ukraine. In addition, Poland led lobbying efforts to impose harsh sanctions against Russia and support Ukraine with strong political, economic and military assistance. It has donated major military aid to Ukraine, including the main channel of military supply and 300 tanks from its own stockpiles. Polish leaders were among the first to arrive in Kiev as artillery still bombarded. The city and the country supports Ukraine's early accession to the European Union. On the other hand, Poland is implementing a program to increase ammunition stocks for the needs of its own army. The war in Ukraine indicates the need for substantial ammunition stocks, especially for artillery. This led to the implementation of a long-term program in Poland called the National Ordnance Reserve. The purpose of the National Ordnance Reserve program is to expand and diversify the national production base of large-caliber artillery munitions and replenish its own stockpiles. The main efforts are aimed at increasing the production of large-caliber artillery shells, which are currently insufficient in Europe, both to replenish their own stocks and to deliver them quickly to Ukraine as military aid. The program will run between 2023 and 2029. The program will be implemented based on the resources of the Polish Development Fund, the Industrial Development Agency, the State Strategic Reserves Agency, and the Ministry of National Defense. Poland also aims to expand the production of shells for Abrams tanks with armor-piercing cores made of depleted uranium. The country wants to establish a business in Europe that will maintain and repair Abrams tanks. It seems that the Ukrainian war was not limited to affecting the lands of Eastern Europe. Only Russia's aggression has mobilized its border neighbors in the first place. Poland, in particular, dealt an unexpected blow to Putin with its latest moves. How will Russia react to the daring moves of its border neighbor, Poland? You can support us with the super thanks button below. What is democracy? Philosophers and political scientists have debated this question for many years. 
There are dozens of different answers to the definition of democracy. But at its most basic level, democracy means that people can freely express their demands. This is possible in democratic countries, but oppressive leaders do not want democratic demands to be discussed. Russian President Vladimir Putin is increasing his repression against the people every day. He is trying to prevent the democratic demands of the Russian people. However, the Russian people continue to revolt against Putin's policies. Russian people are using interesting methods to protest Putin as anchor. Daily News We investigated what is happening in Russia for you. Let's start if you are ready. In fact, it was not possible for the Russian people to organize very big protests because such protests were never allowed in Russia. Putin, who has ruled Russia since 1999, intervened in all protests. But in recent years, Putin's pressure has increased more. After Russia decided to invade Ukraine, the Russian people were very brave and started protests. These first protests were stopped very harshly by the police. Protesters were arrested and police presence was increased all over the country. But the Russian people constantly found new ways to continue their protests. Russian protesters are communicating through social media. Russian youth organized through social media platforms are doing their best to stop this war. Russian youth think that Putin should resign as soon as possible. These protests by Russian youth are attracting a lot of attention from the public, especially the families of the soldiers support these protests. Hundreds of thousands of people in Russia have been forcibly recruited into the army and sent to war zones. Soldiers cannot communicate with their families. Families are very worried because they have no news from their soldiers. It is common knowledge that the Kremlin government has not accurately disclosed the number of Russian soldiers killed. It has been repeatedly revealed that the Kremlin has released false information. That's why the families of Russian soldiers are demanding an explanation as soon as possible. The families always support the young protesters. It is also known that the Russian people are in a very difficult situation because of this war. Every day the Russian people are shaken by the news of the death of soldiers. Many soldiers from every region of Russia have died. Russian people want this war to end. This war has also made the living conditions in Russia very difficult. First of all, Russian citizens are in great fear. Russians, especially those living close to Russian military bases, are experiencing great panic. Russia cannot ensure the security of its country. There is also a huge economic crisis in Russia because of the war. The Russian stock market is rapidly losing value. The people in Russia are experiencing a huge crisis due to the rapid increase in inflation. The Russian people want this war to end and Putin to resign in order to solve the economic crisis. The methods used by the Russian people to voice their demands on this issue are also quite interesting. Russian citizens are trying new methods against Putin's repression since the police intervened too harshly in anti-war protests in Russia. Rebels are trying a new method. Russian citizens start riots due to local problems in their regions. For example, in Russia, a group of young people gathered to protest against a municipal park project. This prevents the police from banning the protest. The activists then start chanting anti-war slogans. As a result, protests are organized one after the other in many cities across Russia. These actions are having a significant impact in Russia. More and more people in Russia are uniting against Putin. One of the slogans of the protests has influenced millions of people in Russia. Courage is contagious. Protesters have started writing this phrase on walls in different Russian cities. Russian people's anger against Putin continues to grow. This is also affecting Russian politics. According to polls conducted in Russia, the rate of Putin's supporters has dropped to 35%. Putin is nearing the end of his political career. It is thought that Putin cannot win any election in Russia anymore. Therefore, Russian politics is experiencing very active days. However, according to experts, the person expected to lead the country after Putin is not a politician for many years. Putin has intensely repressed opposition politicians. One of the opposition politicians, Alexei Navalny, was poisoned. There is no strong actor against Putin in Russian politics. However, 
The harshest criticism of Putin in Russia recently comes from a businessman, Yevgeny Prigozhin. The leader of the Wagner Group, a mercenary company operating in Russia, has increased his criticism of Putin. Prigozhin had very strong relations with Putin in the past. However, they have recently fallen out. Prigozhin is making very harsh statements against Putin. The defeat of the Russian army in Ukraine is increasing Prigozhin's power because the Wagner Group is now very important for Russia. Russia cannot win this war without the Wagner Group. That's why Putin cannot do anything against Prigozhin. Prigozhin, on the other hand, continues to increase his criticism of Putin. Prigozhin is one of the most famous people in Russia. He also has an influential power over the Russian military and bureaucracy. He aims to use this power to become the new leader of the Kremlin Palace. Prigozhin's aim is causing tensions to Russia to rise. Prigozhin is trying to prove the power and importance of the Wagner Group, saying that the Russian army did not carry enough weapons for the soldiers. Prigozhin said that he would withdraw from Bahamut on May 10. After this statement, the Russian authorities experienced a great panic. The Russian army needs the support of the Wagner Group. According to some allegations in the Russian press, Prigozhin has other plans. Prigozhin is allegedly planning to secretly support anti-Putin protests in Russia. Thus, it is planned to increase the anger against Putin even more. On the other hand, another interesting claim about the protests was shared in the Russian press. The Kremlin was worried that the anti-Putin protests in Russia were on the agenda all over the world. The Kremlin administration claimed that the Russian people were supporting Putin's policies. That's why the Kremlin leaders made a special plan. A group of Russian citizens gathered in Moscow to protest against Sweden's decision to join NATO. This protest was shared by the Russian press, which is controlled by Putin. Russian police did not intervene with these protesters. Kremlin leaders made efforts to ensure that this protest was covered in the European press. According to allegations in the Russian press, some of the participants were public officials in Russia. It was claimed that Russian intelligence secretly organized this event. Anti-Putin youth in Russia think that this protest is a completely fake organization. The day the Russians tried to conduct the last massive missile strike on Ukraine before the new year. The goal of the strike was to take out the Ukrainian energy system and force the Ukrainians to spend the new year in the dark with no electricity. However, this strike did not go as planned. It seems like the Russians failed to prepare their air defense system. So once they launched their missiles, their own air defense started shooting them down. As a result, the Russians shot down at least four of their own missiles and even a fighter jet. The jet exploded and also killed the Russian pilots in fear that their air defense might start shooting down commercial planes passing by. The Russians closed the sky within the 200-kilometer radius of the place where the accident happened. And this is where it gets really interesting. The place where the Russians shut down their fighter aircraft is the notorious Angola Strategic Airfield. As you remember, Russian sources reported that the Ukrainians struck this airfield with drones on the 5th and 26th December. And if the first strike targeted and successfully damaged several Russian bombers, then the second strike allegedly damaged five Russian bombers and destroyed the control post, killing 17 servicemen and wounding 26. Many of them are allegedly the pilots who were supposed to participate in today's missile strike. Understandably, the Russian Ministry of Defense received devastating criticism and everyone started asking why they could not protect a strategic airfield with the carriers of nuclear weapons located 600 kilometers deep inside Russia. In order to avoid the third embarrassment, the Russians decided that the best protection would be just to empty the airfield and relocate all the bombers that were left after the strike to the base located 7,000 kilometers away from Ukraine. They have also pulled in more air defense systems in the region to make sure that no Ukrainian drone can get through and hit this base for the third time. However, such a heightened level of alertness seems to have caused trouble as well. It seems like the Russians failed to timely identify that a passing by fighter jet was friendly, so they shot it down. 
This clearly shows that the mere fact that the Ukrainians might trillionic Russian deeper positions is playing a huge role. Previously, the Russians wouldn't even bother assuming that the only aircraft that could fly so deep inside Russia could only be Russian. But now they need to make sure that the object is friendly. A somewhat similar situation happened in Crimea. As you remember, over the last week, the Ukrainians have conducted a number of massive drone strikes and these drones often got quite deep into the Russian-controlled territory. So today, when the Russians launched their missiles from the Black Sea, some Russian air defense systems started shooting them down. Today, it was reported that there was a series of explosions near John. Locals say that they heard three or four explosions around the time the caliber rockets were heading in the direction of Ukraine. Regional officials confirmed that the explosions were caused by the air defense, but did not specify the targets. Finally, in the Brest region of Belarus, a rocket fell around 25 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Judging by the photo, it looks like it was a rocket from an air defense S-300. Belorusian sources immediately claimed that it was a Ukrainian rocket, although they did not assert whether it was an accident or a deliberate attack. Other sources suggested that it might have been an unsuccessful launch by the Belarusian air defense, similar to what we saw in Jiangxi and Saratov. This is entirely possible because all the incidents involve S-300 systems. And as the air defense system is centralized, the same errors can cause similar accidents anywhere. Ukraine immediately responded to the accusations and showed a willingness to jointly conduct an investigation. Overall, the Russian showed the worst performance with this missile strike several weeks prior. Ukrainian intelligence estimated that the Russians planned to launch around 120 missiles, 